All right. Uh, <clears throat> so now let's talk about instrumentation of user space code. Um, so there's a project uh, which uh, we call uh, LibSide that uh, we've been working on for the past two years or so, two, three years. Um, and it's meant to be really kind of a redesign, a complete redesign of uh, the trace points. So I initially took the did the uh, trace points for the Linux kernel, uh, on which uh, Stephen built trace events. Uh, and then I ported those concepts to user space in LTTNG UST. Uh, but eventually, I mean, we faced some limitations or, yeah, uh, uh, with that, those approaches. And uh, after some discussions with Microsoft, seeing how they did things on the Windows side, so I came up with an completely different scheme on how to instrument user space uh, that is much, much simpler actually than trace events, uh, but keeps most of the benefits we have from trace events and trace points. So I'm going to uh, present a bit the recent, uh, I would say, progress uh, in those areas. So, so we, the, one of the recent thing is we moved the scope of that project from only targeting C and C++ to really create a specification that specifies an ABI for runtime and various language instrumentation. So uh, LibSide becomes a reference implementation of that specification for C and C++, but it's not the only target. So, what the side specification covers. So it, uh, it covers how to describe events and field descriptions uh, as an ABI, uh, binary ABI. Uh, it, it, uh, it has a type system. It describes how to uh, serialize capture, uh, captured arguments and pass that over to tracers. That's also ABI. And it specifies how to sample internal application uh, state. Um, so it basically specifies how applications can be instrumented and how the tracers can connect uh, to that instrumentation and query uh, what is available. So one recent progress, uh, so it's uh, mainly uh, Olivier Dion who has worked on this uh, recently. So uh, we're, it's in a feature branch currently. Uh, so we've added static type check checking between event descriptions and the call site that passes or uh, that pass argument. Uh, uh, and it's based on macros. So uh, before that work, I was not even remotely aware that this could be done, and actually that works. So uh, we basically rely on uh, preprocessor macros to emit two things whenever a macro is being used. So there's something that is emitted for type validation, and we emit whatever description we want. So that's the, at the event description site. And then on the call side, we also emit two things. So we emit something that does the type validation and uh, that will cause the compiler to generate a compilation error if the type mismatch. And we generate whatever is needed to push the argument on the stack following the ABI. So that actually works. And there's no multi-header inclusion, nothing. It's just by having this idea of uh, emitting two things when a macro is used. So, uh, and I think that, so I don't have many, many slides on this topic, that's good. So it's the last slide, it's a discussion. One of the aspects I would like to discuss, uh, so I've uh, been interacting a lot with uh, Bo Belgrave, uh, actually with the TraceFS meetings that we have uh, every two weeks uh, for the past month, uh, year or two years that I've been attending, something like that. We've been, it's been going on for a while, yeah. So, so he, he seems to be very interested to extend user event uh, to kind of, uh, well, how I see it. So currently user event, when user space registers an event with some typing information that says, okay, well, the payload that is going to come when this event is hit is going to have this layout with those fields and all. So this is currently using a string. So the application needs to format as a string the typing information that it, of the event it registers. Uh, so I, I understand why people use string when they are on the command line, that's fine, but I feel like reusing a string as an ABI for uh, an IOCTOL that register an event is a bit pushing the envelope. But it's ABI now. So, but we could extend that to eventually support expressing this typing information with the side ABI. 
So that would be, uh, I guess, my proposal for that, uh, to extend user event to allow that. And then user event could also be extended so that rather than receiving in terms of argument, well, no, not rather than. So it, the existing ABI will always have to be supported. But in addition, so there could be a new mode where passing the arguments over could be done following the part of the side ABI that describes how to pass arguments uh, to, uh, to a tracer. So, uh, so those are ideas. Uh, I, if you guys have uh, feedback on this or would like more uh, discussion on this, that's, that's one topic I'd like to discuss. Well, Steven? I, I'll just say basically, uh, I know the string parsing, that probably said fit, fit in there. Uh, there's nothing that stops us from, like I said, if we create another yeah. let do it. Because I mean, there's a lot of times we just always have a raw version of something. I mean, even uh, like trace print K, we have a trace print K raw, which is actually made for writing data structures directly into the ring buffer and then extracting it. And F trace just says, I got a binary blob. You read it, you do whatever you want with it. So, <laughs> same thing. Yep. Awesome. Maybe I'm too uh, com uh, contaminated by your. Um, Google way, <laughs> but uh, you can. Uh, we can try to use that a protobuf. Protobuf, <laughs> oh god. Uh, so one of the thing is, I that is really on the tracing fast path between the application and the tra and the kernel, uh, or, or even. So this ABI is going to be in the fast path between application and my user space tracer, right? So. I, I care very much about minimizing the overhead of setting up those arguments on the stack, right? Uh, so currently, it's really uh, it's laid out as an array of entries which will follow the typing information that matches the event description. So the idea is from a let's say a, a bytecode that gets interpreted in a tracer. My goal is that this bytecode can get directly go and read that informa input information from the array and make quick decisions, filtering very quickly. So I don't want to have a protobuf decoder in there at all, <laughs> at all. Okay. No. Thank you. Any other, other comments? questions? Other questions or discussion or? Yes. Back on the scope of the project, you say this will allow you to trace uh, runtime other than C, C++. So there would be also interpreted languages, or yes. like Perl, Python, whatever, Java, Ruby, Go. Yes. Uh. So, so the goal there, uh, so I'm making sure that the parts that become ABI are kind of runtime agnostic. One example. So uh, in libside, there's code to, uh, let's say, uh, do the call of uh, calling libside from uh, the runtime, the C, C++ runtime. So that call is following the System 5 ABI. It has a specific signature and all. So what I plan to uh, put in the spec is just we need access to those structures, that data, and this is their layout, but I won't specify that it needs to be a System 5 ABI call. That would be up to the implementation. So yeah, splitting ABI in the specification. The rest can be implementation specific on per runtime. I just want to always verify this because, you know, I'm always in the kernel, but just saying, because this would be like an uh, interface for user space, you would be attaching to this. And once you have that attachment, then in user space, so if you use libside and you have, I guess you could put whatever you want in it, I'm assuming that anything then could say, hey, this is, has libside in it, I could write a tracer or something right now and hook to it? Or but it not necessarily just libside. I mean, you could have Go. You, uh, using that ABI to emit its own instrumentation, have its own Go tracer connect onto that, and have, have from that Go implementation, have its own hook to let the kernel know about the existence of this. So it does not have to rely on the C, C++ level library. It can be na done natively in the language. So you have a specification for this already written? I'm, I'm working on that. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, question on the overhead for the interpreted languages. Uh, we noticed that uh, even for minor version changes, for example, from Python 11, uh, 3.11 to 3.12, there are really hard changes in the runtime that are not affecting the Python API, so that doesn't break anything, but the runtime changes internally. And if you are run doing traces, um, what is your expectation for the maintainers of such uh, runtimes to be applied to site. So 
do they have to change every time with every change in the runtime everything or uh, what's the idea the the idea is okay so you're talking about uh, python which would let's say try to implement uh, side support yes so so side specifies structures with uh, that are kind of packed with the known size and layout and all that stuff so I don't, I, I'm not sure I understand fully your question. So is it that the runtime have the freedom to move around the content of those structures? Yes, um, from my experience, I'm doing uh, tracing. Um, runtimes like uh, Ruby, Python, Perl, they are changing internal runtime structures quite often, quite heavily between minor versions that don't, that don't, don't affect okay. uh, yeah. so, external stuff. So the nice thing about, so I'm pretty sure that those runtimes need to interact with the kernel, right? And they sometimes need to issue system calls. Uh, not really, because they are the uh, the Python uh, virtual machine basically that is in between. But if it's open the file, I mean, Sorry. If it's, if it's open the file, it has those. Yes, I mean there are some cases where you need a fixed layout. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I wanted because you were saying. Oh, wait, a microphone. Oh, wow. Microphone. <laughs> Only one hand, by the way. <laughs> I'm curious where Mathieu was leading with his remark because the conversation was going. You were saying uh, the Python developers they change the runtime at every single version. My intuition was well, it's up to them. I mean, if they want to maintain a tracer, they also have to uh, change the tracer uh, with those. Uh, uh, um, uh, improvement to their uh, runtime. You were saying, wait, but they have to issue a syscalls, right? And then what's the next, uh, where you were well, leading to? Well, the next to? point is, I mean, that runtime has to inter interact with the outside world, right? It has to format okay. network packets and so, send them, them elsewhere, right? There are cases <clears throat> where you need a fixed ABI layout. No, I so think, I think be this, let me see, maybe I'll get the question here differently. So say if you have, um, you want to trace the internals, um, you're basically tracing the internal workings of Python. So yep. you have Python, you're tracing, so there's a structure inside and want to trace, you know, put a lib side on that structure, but then later on, next version, they change the structure. No, now, no, 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 that was, that's <laughs> not how it should be done. So <laughs> but it, let's say Python would want to add trace uh, side events in Python, kind of describing the inner working of, of the runtime, right? So what you would do is you would pick what is really kind of high level important information and put that as, well, this, is, this kind of becomes an interface that tracers can connect on. With a newer version, that's a concept goes away completely. You remove that event. Or that, or, and then you change the semantic and everything. But then the tooling needs to adapt because that concept is gone. So. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and also I'm assuming that if you're adding tracing for this, maybe work with the Python and you know, Go or Perl or whatever uh, maintainers that they want the trace, you know, basically like the kernel. The kernel likes, we have these trace events all over the place. Same thing, if you're going, well, they'll put it in there and they'll probably, if they want information out of it, they might want to keep those things somewhat consistent. Yeah, and I mean, don't put implementation details, but put high level concept and the relevant information that goes with it. Follow up, uh, Mathieu, as much as you uh, want to share, uh, uh, I believe that this is a very generic mechanism that uh, can be adopted by the various runtime, but you probably have a goal in mind. Maybe you, there is one particular uh, language that you are planning to uh, support, I don't know, C Sharp or whatever is your f future project. So if you want to share what is the exact application that you have in mind, or it just... Uh, the, the initial one I care about is C and C++. I mean, that's what my customers are using today. However, things like Python. I mean, AI is quite big right now, and I'm oh, okay. pretty sure in the coming years yeah. it, it's going to be an important target. So I want to keep the door open to have support for that type of runtimes. And Rust. And Rust. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Any other discussion points? So you're all done? Oh. Thank you.